Welcome back. Now, as you can see, tension's really mounting as everyone's testing out their top speed. Come along, let's have a look and see. Oh, I've heard all about this car. Guy, isn't it? It is indeed. Hello, no. Janie. Nice to meet you. So, this is one of the newer models? Yeah, this one's the R34. Uh, most of the other cars here are the R33, the previous model. Right. Uh, I actually have one of the R33, the old models as well. Oh. Um, and I've just recently purchased this to upgrade. Uh, the other thing that everyone notices is it's got a little computer inside the dash which tells you everything that's going on, which you might want to have a look at later. And it's uh, a bit of a gadget, really, that uh, all of us uh, people who like Skylines, we like our gadgets. So. <laughs> is it a useful gadget or is it a toy? It's toys? partly useful. It has um, some features on it which are genuinely useful, such as uh, exhaust gas temperature and uh, those sorts of things. So it monitors a lot of bits of the engine you wouldn't normally monitor. And it will actually alert you when you have a problem. Uh, and you can actually display it on graphs and all this sort of stuff. But it's a bit like having a PlayStation in the dashboard, really. <laughs> and uh, in Japan, you, you can actually watch uh, telly through it and do sat-nav as well. Really? And I've got a television thing set up for it, but it only works in Japan, so it's not really much good. So unless you're over there... Unless I'm right. over there, it's no good at all. You, surely you can't drive legally, though, when you're uh, watching telly? No, they usually have it set up so that uh, it works off a switch on the handbrake, so you have to be stationary for it to work. Um, right. Primarily, I think, because the Japanese spend so much time sat in traffic that they probably yeah. need to have something to do. <laughs> um, we're not quite that bad over here. So, not yet. Uh, have you ever seen the M25? <laughs> uh, I have been on it several times. Uh, not, this, is, this car isn't my choice of car for the M25. No. Uh, so you say you've got one of the older cars. I have one of the old ones, also blue as well. Oh, you like blue then? I do like blue cars, yes. So um, is the newer one better? Uh, yes, I was surprised by how much better it was actually. Uh, I, when I bought it I thought it would be very similar because I knew how much of the mechanics were the same between the two. The engine is essentially unchanged between the two. But um, the whole driving experience is, is actually a lot better. The car feels a lot sharper. Uh, the wheels and the gearbox make it a lot better. It's a shorter wheelbase, so it is more responsive. Yeah. Um, it's set up more to oversteer as well, so the back end goes out a bit quicker than the 33, so it drives a bit more like a rear-wheel drive car than the R33 does. But, I mean, on balance, both cars are very, very good cars. Both cars are supercars. Um, you know, this one's just had uh, five years more technology put into it because it was produced five years later. And what's the top speed of the car? Uh, it the depends how much you've done to the car. Um, there's people here with modifications that have done all sorts of things. There is a car coming along today which has done 211 miles an hour at Bruntingthorpe. It's got massive modifications. Um, I mean, it's known as the beast and it is an absolute beast. <laughs> Most of the cars here will probably do certainly easily 160 miles an hour. This one, with some modifications it's had, would probably do 180. Um, so you have already modified uh, it? It has some, but it's going to have a whole lot more put on shortly. What have you done to it already? Uh, this car I've only had two months, so it's only had the bits that the previous owner fitted, so it's got a, an exhaust system on it, it's got a big downpipes on it, it's got air filters, and it's uh, running a slightly higher boost level. But um, there are potentially some plans to put uh, quite so a lot of So come on then, things. what are your plans, Guy? Uh, we haven't decided yet, is to be honest. It's, you <laughs> Sounds know, a bit top secret to me. It's, 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 not, it's not quite, it's just that um, you can spend an awful lot of money. I mean, there are people who've spent anything up to £50,000 on their cars. Um, there are people not here who have gearboxes that alone have cost £10,000. Um, and, you know, there are engine conversions, take the engine up to 2.8 litres to 3 litres, and they can cost anything up to twelve, fifteen thousand pounds. I mean it's possible to spend an enormous amount of money. I think the thing is that you have to draw the line where you want to stop spending money. Are you money. gonna be like getting another mortgage to, to do that your uh, no, improvements or no. you're just gonna do little things like I'll do a lot in one go but uh, maybe I, change the mats or something. No I'll do I'll do a lot <laughs> in one go but uh, you know I have the money ready to do it so it's not so much of a problem. So you're not gonna tell us what you're gonna do? No because I haven't decided. Oh right okay. <laughs> but there are people who have had a lot of things done that um, they'll happily tell you about. Um, very few skylines are left standard. A lot of people do basic things like the exhaust and uh, air filter. They're really loud, aren't they? They are loud, and in fact a lot of the track days now, because um, there's more and more concern about the noise pollution from the track days, and you get complaints from people who live near airfields on track days and racing circuits, a lot of these circuits are now putting increasingly tight noise restrictions on, and there's a few cars here that actually a lot of racing circuits they won't allow on, really? which is kind of crazy, but uh, the problem is you have a lot of circuits like this where people have moved in nearby over the years. They never knew it was a racing circuit. They've become intolerant to noise and um, yeah. you know, the regulations are tightening. So I finally found what I've been looking for, the Beast. And the proud owner of the Beast is Gary. Hello. How do you think? So Hi. we've heard all about this. It's a legend in its own lunchtime, this car. And you, obviously. Yeah. So what's special then? 
Um, well, basically, uh, it's my development car for GT Art. Um, and what I wanted to do was um, try out all the different bits and pieces that HKS do for the Nissan Skylines um, so that uh, my customers would benefit. Um, so basically what I've done is I've gone the whole hog over a two, two or three year period. Um, so you mean all the bits that you can buy for Skyline, you've put all on one car to see if they all work so you know what you're selling is worth it? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. because in that way you see, um, I mean I can give my people uh, value for money. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, if I had one of these cars and I was just going to copy you and have my own beast, mm. how much would that cost me? Well, somewhere, I suppose, you see the thing is it's more expensive the first the first one's more expensive uh, because it's all development. Um, but parts-wise, you're looking at about forty thousand. Just oh, on what's just in there. fifty grand for the car. Fifty grand for the car, more or less. No, I want more than that for it. So fifty or more thousand for the car, and then oh, just another just forty grand for the. Seventy-five piece. a buyer the car. Yeah, all right, you can is. get a flat for that. <laughs> Well, I think I can safely say that I found what I was looking for here at Kemble. And I think the funniest thing of all is just seeing these Nissan Skylines competing with aircraft for tarmac space. Don't forget, join us next time for more motoring madness.